Picture this. You're sitting at your desk and your colleague comes over and asks, hey, we need to pair a program on this ticket in order to get this done. So being the kind and considerate developer you are, reluctantly, you say yes. So you open up VS Code and start to get to work, but then you freeze. Your mind goes blank. Your colleague tries to encourage you by starting you off. Before you know it, he's come up with a whole method in a space of about 10 minutes, coding non-stop the whole time. How did he do that? Of course, you can code that as well, but it normally takes you a lot longer. Similarly, you're in a PBR session and everyone is discussing a ticket and the product owner just asks right does everyone understand the ticket and are you ready to point but you're not ready because you need to go through the ticket and dissect it but at the same time you don't want to slow everyone down so you go with the flow and say yes as a developer of almost 10 years i still experience this from time to time but i've managed to get much better at dealing with it partly because a slow developer isn't necessarily a bad thing and is a lot more normal than you think in the software industry but also i've managed to come up with some methods to become better at absorbing technical information and requirements and translating that into code. These are the methods I'm going to share with you today. Firstly, being a slow programmer is actually a good thing in some cases. Being the fastest at programming is not an indicator of high performance. In fact, it could be detrimental to the developer and the company. Unfortunately, this has become a symptom of our industry. Leak code style interviews where you get only 20 minutes to solve an arbitrary problem that only makes this worse. Some of the best programmers are often thoughtful and consistent consider it when it comes to coming up with the best solution. Why is this the case? Well, oftentimes when I come across a problem, the first thing you need to do before writing any code is consider what the problem actually is. This means understanding it thoroughly before coming up with a solution. Sometimes this can be just writing stuff down on paper or even taking notes about the problem. It could even be simply just thinking about it. Once you nail down the problem, the solution will often come to you. However, then you have to consider, is this really the best solution? Is it the most efficient? Will this have a knock-on effect on any other parts of the code a programmer who thinks like this isn't slow. They are considering all the different scenarios, which means the code will be more robust and more likely to be approved. Sometimes this isn't always practical, especially when you're working in an agile scrum environment where you have to constantly churn out tickets under time constraints. Add to the fact that you have PBR sessions, stand-ups and other meetings, then the time to code can be limited. Therefore, you have to code not only efficiently, but you have to make sure the code is also robust. Under these circumstances, remember that story points are only really estimates that's okay if you don't finish the sprint on time. It's actually rare to have a sprint that meets 100% efficiency where you complete all the tickets. With this in mind, make sure that you have some focus time allocated to just not coding anything, but only thinking about the solution. This is then your opportunity to really slow down and think about the what to do and how to do it. Notoriously, we developers are just bad at estimating how long it will take to complete a particular task or project. An easy task can end up becoming more difficult if we come across a random obscure error in the code. My my philosophy is to underpromise and over deliver. It's not that you're lazy, it's that software is well weird. Generally, when I say slow down, I don't mean completely grind to a halt. You're still technically working on the task, but instead you're breaking down the problem, thinking about technical debt and future iterations of the code. This is engaging critical thinking, and I think it's crucial when building large scale sustainable applications. Ideally, you want to get to a point where you are trusted with the most critical parts of the code, and that kind of trust isn't given to the fastest code in the room. It's given to the most thorough one, the one that asks the right questions, double checks everything and takes the time to understand not just how the code works, but how it interacts with everything around it. Anyone can write code that works, but writing code that's safe, scalable and maintainable. This is why being slow or rather deliberate is actually a mark of professionalism, because in the long run, your reputation is built on how many fires you prevented, not how quickly you merged a pull request. The more senior you become, the more you're job becomes about reducing risk, not just shipping fast. Another tip that I can give you is when taking part in technical meetings, preparation is key, especially as a slower programmer. Winging it can be really hard, especially if you lack the knowledge in a particular area where the discussion is around. Look at the agenda of the meeting. If there isn't one, then try to find out what it's going to be about. Then prepare ahead. If it's a new feature, then find out how you would implement this feature. Or if it's a huddle about an issue or a bug, just spend about five minutes before the meeting sketching some quick diagrams diagrams about the problem and make sure you understand it. This will help you a great deal when the discussion becomes technical. Finally, never compare yourself to other programmers. Yes, we all have the 
the same technical ability, but that doesn't mean we're all the same. People learn in different ways, and having different perspectives is always a good thing, especially in the world of programming. If you don't understand something or can't do it quickly on the spot, then don't be afraid to say so. Maybe say something like, I don't have the answer right now, but I just need to do a quick spike and find out. This is perfectly fine. The key thing is to always be learning and thinking deeply. Remember, you're not slow, you're just solving problems the right way. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.